You're listening to Darling Shine, a podcast by Elodie Pullen and myself, Chloe Fisher. Darling Shine is your survival kit to the unexpected shit life throws at you. This week's episode is sponsored by Nat V, an Australian-owned and designed basics line who create knickers that are better for bodies and better for the planet. Yep, all of their knickers are at least 80% biodegradable and not only are they super soft and oh so comfortable, Nat V also give back to our local community. What bloody legends. If you guys want 30% off, please use code DARLINGSHINE at natvbasics.com. Hello, Shalinks. Woo! I'm so freaking excited for today. We would love to welcome our best friend, Laura Enova. Everyone has actually been asking for this one. Laura and I grew up together since we were bubs running amok in the streets of the good old North Narra. 2101 represent. Represent. Laura has basic- <laughs> She's basically been a surf prodigy since she was born, winning the World Junior Championships in 2009 and globe trotting ever since on the World Surf League. She's always been an absolute daredevil. If you guys think we're brave, you need to see the waves that this chick charges. We call her our big wave Dave. The past few years, she's been on a mission to surf the world's biggest waves. Some of these waves are over 25 to 30 foot. To put this into perspective, that's roughly the size of a three-story building. She's fucking out of her mind. We're going to talk to our best mate today about the roller coaster ride that is her life and what got her where she is and especially being a woman in a male-dominated surf industry. She's a perfect example of carving her own path. Welcome to the show, Laura. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah we've been waiting for this moment for so long but um I'm so excited darlings I think that's you know you push that on to everyone darling I know darling we are going to Europe this summer as well us three oh Yay! my gosh and Minnie and Minnie, Minnie. girls it's club gorgeous. and Fisher oh my. and Fisher oh my yeah gosh, I cannot wait it's going to be a mental time we're finally going to oh. get to globe trot with Chloe again Oh my See, God. I used to be the globe trotter, and then now she's just like I got the houses all around the world, and <laughs> we're like, "Hey, can Holy. we come stay?" <laughs> I'm yes. homeless. It's gonna be girls Literally. on tour for sure. We Laura used to just never be in Australia, and now that's just Chloe. Fuck yeah, that's yeah. gonna be my life soon too. I'm coming on tour. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you're oh on tour. You have little headphones. That'll be so freaking oh, cute. Oh, I bought them last night. They're so freaking cute. They're like little pink, hilarious ones. They're gonna I've got to show you guys. I'll put I'll definitely put them on the Darling Shine Instagram. They're so freaking cute. She's gonna look hilarious. Because I just don't want to go deaf, you know, at the Fisher shows. <laughs> yeah, I actually said to Paul yesterday, I said to him, I go, So like, you know, can Minnie come to some of the clubs in Ibiza? Like and he looked at me, he's like, are you actually fucking out of your mind? You cannot bring babies to clubs. I'm like, yeah, that, I guess that makes sense. But I was more so thinking like the day clubs, but he's like, no, you can't bring an infant to no, a, a club. I see babies at festivals all the time. Well, I think festivals are different, like a different ball game to like an actual club. Like yeah, you can't walk yeah. into a club with a baby, no, she's which like, I was like. Oh, excuse me, where's your ID, Minnie? <laughs> Yeah, well, we're like, she's not really a baby. <laughs> Is she 18? But, Lorb, seriously, what the fuck scares you? You are so hectic. Like, you blow us away every day. But I can't even believe what you do and then you come and, like, just hang out with us. I'm like, this chick's <laughs> psycho. Yeah, going out with, on the town with you girls probably scares me the most of anything. It's fucking scary. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Maybe Elodie. <laughs> no, well, you still anyway. When I, like, was, like, a goody-goody and, um, and like, yeah, you guys – you didn't corrupt me I just like I always loved that I would like go off and surf and just have fun and then come home to you girls and it was just like my surfing life never existed and we just like live this like it was just like the double life and like you girls just always grounded me and um then I'd go off and do my thing again and um but yeah lots of stuff still scares me in the world um yoga classes going to the RTA (laughs) (laughs) all of that like super scary to me (laughs) I'm like I'm happy to just go offline for like three weeks and like go on a boat in Indonesia and that's like not scary at all but like yeah traffic and stuff is scary. We were trying to we were trying to guess what you were going to say you're probably like yeah she's not scared of big waves but she's scared of like spiders or snakes or something like that I'm like no, it's more like these like random like real life like adult situations and I'm just like huh, I don't think I'm like like qualified for this <laughs> I think I'm in, I'm in denial that I'm an adult <laughs> 
<laughs> going to the RTA um, is fucking etched though. The, the forms you have to fill out and the lines. <laughs> oh my gosh, I it love that. Three, three times to get my my um my driver's license. Oh, I was definitely first go. Yeah, Chloe loves going to the RTA. <laughs> yeah, yeah I do that with my she school. loves all those tasks. Like I'll always like push those tasks onto her. Like whenever we're doing anything together, Chloe, you're you're the task girl. Steve Jobs. I love that. I'm more than happy yeah. to be the task girl. Nothing gets done if it's not sent to me. <laughs> me and me and Laura are way more action vibes. Like we want to be yeah. out there doing shit on totally. the computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, and I and I and I work it all out. But um, I wanted to firstly rewind, and I wanted to tell uh, our listeners a little bit about your backstory. So Laura's, like I said in our introduction, she has been on this surfing tour since I can remember, since we were like little girls. And she was she's always toured by herself with no parents since I think she was like. 13 years old I used to be it's actually funny because when we were younger Laura used to be sponsored by Roxy for surfing and I used to be sponsored by Roxy for modeling and I'm sure that like I went on one of these trips and I'm pretty sure I cried and I called my mom because I wanted to go home because I was such a pussy whereas <laughs> Laura like does it every, used to do it all like all year all year round no parents like what went on as a 13 year old girl on tour without your parents and like who looked after you yeah, no, I remember, like, when I was 12, like, I, I loved gymnastics for my whole life and we did that together, Chloe. Like, <laughs> we weren't very good yeah, at it. Always, and then, like, I was always a silver medal. I, always, I was always shit at everything. We've discussed it before on the podcast. Like, I was actually never really – I'm good at tasks but not anything really, like, active. <laughs> always <laughs> But for some reason we still did all the sports together, like nippers, gymnastics, touch footy, netball. Like, we did all the sports. And then um, – we moved to surfing. We actually did the Northern Beaches board riders together, oh the girls' God, board yes. riders. And then, like, Chloe quit because she almost, really like, drowned. drowned in seaweed one day and she, like, came in and was like, oh, oh, and, like, fuck this tantrum. And I was like, oh. it's okay, doll. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but, but, then, you, sure sis. <laughs> Take a seat. Uh, but, um, yeah, like, when I was, yeah, when I eventually, like, fell in love with surfing and I was like, I want to do that my living I um yeah got sponsored by Roxy and then they um when I was 11 and by the time I was 12 they were like oh when I was 11 actually they asked if I wanted to go to Hawaii for this Lisa Anderson champ camp and basically Lisa Anderson is like the four-time women's world champion like was my hero I had posters of her on my wall and they um yeah they just sent me over there by myself like a little unaccompanied minor I got picked up by all my heroes in Hawaii and like driven to the North Shore and like stayed in this house for a week um yeah over in Hawaii and then I actually missed my flight home because one of the girls um that was like also a world champ like read my itinerary wrong and I couldn't leave for like four days because the flights back then were like they were like every three days and I ended up missing my own 12th birthday party oh my god home. I remember this yeah and so I had this birthday party that happened that was the one time when I was overseas and I was like this is amazing. I had the best time ever in Hawaii. I just ran around with my heroes and surfed the best waves. And then, but then I missed my 12th birthday party and my mum still had like 40 <laughs> kids at our house at home because she didn't have time to cancel it. The party and, went um, on. And I, my face was such a fairer thing yeah. to do. And she had, and she had 12 <laughs> kids sleep over the night and uh, my face was a <laughs> little sick and like. <laughs> she made a bed for Laura and there was like a head, like she printed a face of Laura in the bed and she still <laughs> stayed the night with all of us girls. That's like so funny. I remember that. Oh my God. Sarah tells that story all the time as well. It's like oh so gosh. funny. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, we um, and then since then, like I just travelled. I did I did so many contests. There was so many grom comps back in the day. Chloe came to so many of them with like her brother, and um, yeah, like I just competed, competed. I didn't really, I didn't even do my like my year ten high school certificate. I missed that because I was competing, and then I ended up leaving in year eleven. And I just by the time I was seventeen, I'd qualified for the world tour. And yeah, won a couple of world junior titles, which you guys were there for that one at Narrabeen. Yes. We'll have to get the photo. Um, you guys made this hilarious sign and surprised me on the beach. I almost died. It was so embarrassing, but it was like so cool. It was like, we love Laura, NN Rips 2101, which is like our postcode. <laughs> North Narrabeen. Did we get on like the front page of the paper or something with yeah, that? Yeah. And you, you guys won. It was you two and Corey. Um, that was yeah. honestly one of the best days, like, ever. When I think of you, I always think back to that day. Like, the, that was yeah. – was that a mass – that was a huge moment for you, though, Lorbs. Like, that was the World Junior Champs that you won. Yeah. And then since then it was just, like, 
you're on a winning strike, hey? Totally, yeah. I was always kind of like, yeah, like in that contest, I was probably a bit of an underdog and I ended up coming through with the win, which was like amazing, the biggest win of my career and then ended up qualifying that year as well for the World Tour. And, um, yeah, like when I was younger, I just seemed to like, I, I had the, no care in the world. I would just like go compete and like have so much fun. Didn't really care if I'd win or lose. And it was all just like very lighthearted and fun. I kind of pissed off a lot of the other surfer girls because they were like, she doesn't even care and she just wins. She doesn't care if she wins or loses and she just always <laughs> does really good. <laughs> and, um, and you were having fun and they're just like grinding away. Yeah, yeah. and I was just like probably not taking it very seriously. And um but yeah, then all these things were just happening and it just happened all really quickly. And then before I knew it, I was like, wham, bam, on the world tour. Um, and yeah, did really good in my first contest, like beat Stephanie Gilmore and then um, couldn't make a heat for like oh. eight contests. So. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I just got my ass whooped. And like, that was like the first time where I was like, oh, wow, like com- competing on the world tour is really hard. Like I got like one fluky win and then just couldn't make it through a heat. <laughs> And then I like, yeah. started unraveling completely and was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? Who am I? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, like you actually had to start to focus. Yeah, tried to focus. Had to like <laughs> read. This mind, I think, in, in the business. Yeah. I remember I'd have like Coach Chloe just being like, believe in yourself. You can do it. Like everyone was like, what happened? What's wrong with Laura? And, um, yeah, the more I'd lose, the more I'd just like doubt myself and like lose all this confidence and then, got all stressed and anxious and like yeah that was like so it was big roller coaster the world too I think any competitive athlete can just be like yeah it's just so mental and and whack absolutely you've had it's been such a roller coaster and I also just want to talk about like the the journey as a whole like being such a young girl on tour you're winning everything such a male dominated industry you're running around the beaches in a bikini do you think and obviously this is so out of your control and I, I know there's been so much go on and like it's taken a toll in so many ways like when you were so young do you feel like because of the industry that it you are in that you kind of became like over sexualized in a way or just because you were such a young girl and you girls did have to just kind of wear bikinis because you're promoting you know the surf brands um do you think that took a toll on you like I know there were certain photo shoots that may have portrayed you as like this sexy surfer rather than like the surfer beast the fit girl that you were do you know what I mean yeah yeah no 100 like it was so bizarre like surfing all of a sudden like a bunch of us young girls came through and um there was like a couple of new surf mags that came came out that uh were like exploding and it was like a really amazing like well, a huge time in, in surfing um kind of like back at you know 2010 like around 2010 and, and stuff so that's probably like yeah 12 years ago but um did go to school <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> not much it's actually 10 years ago doll <laughs> Shit. Is it? <laughs> 2012. Quick <laughs> uh, maths. Yeah. Quick maths. maths. We need a calculator. But, um, yeah, basically <laughs> surfing went through this phase where, like, all of us young girls kind of just, like, start – like, there was this magazine that was, like, you know, like, doing these sexy surfer girl photo shoots and it kind of just became the norm and, like, like most of the girls on tour at the time, you know, we ha- none of us had even had like a surfing photo in this mag. And I think that was our goal was to be able to have a surfing photo in this mag. But then like my first ever like magazine photo, like surfing photo, I mean magazine photo was, yeah, this sexy shoot, cover cover shoot. And um, at the time I was like just running with it and I was like, oh, the girls are doing it. Like I guess this is just like, like and there was all this attention around like, like the surf girls and like yeah the bikinis and it was just kind of exploding like that but then yeah like I think I didn't realize till like a few years later how much it affected me mentally just like I I guess doing that and getting the attention for that sort of made me like completely doubt like who I was as a surfer and I was always trying to prove myself in my surfing and my athletic ability after because I was like I don't want to just be that and I kind of like pigeonholed myself in this area of being like yeah doing all these sort of sexy shoots and then Instagram wasn't even around back then um but yeah like I was just had sort of become this person that like I really wasn't because like Chloe you guys know me like I didn't even wear a dress until I was like freaking like 17 like literally like these girls had to like 
I was such a tomboy like and so you I remember Chloe you were like oh my gosh this is so weird seeing you like doing these mm. shoots because like this is so not you and like at the time like I just had like the my management and be like yeah like run with it run with it this is like awesome like amazing exposure and like I guess it's mm. that thing like any exposure is good exposure and then I was like oh my god yeah if I can if I do these shoots then maybe I'll get surf photos in that mag eventually and yeah. I feel like as well, like as a best friend, as like I would look at these shoots as well, and you and I could see like through in your eyes, and I'd be like, "You're not like not that you weren't comfortable, but like you're like this isn't what I'm here for. Like I, I'm an athlete, and and like you said exactly, like the girls are doing these shoots because like they're getting exposure in these magazines, but it's almost like it's not what you're here for. Like you, you're not the model surfer, you're the athlete surfer and you were getting portrayed in the wrong way. And then, yeah, exactly. You, you pigeonhole yourself in this little corner and it's like, well, where do I go through now? Because I've got these expectations to now be this sexy surfer when I want to be the athlete surfer. Totally. And I remember yeah. I rocked up to one contest one year and I was like, I'm not going to wear bikinis, I'm going to wear these little like legging things and like I was just, it it ended up getting so in my mind that I was like, I was trying to like unravel what I'd done, didn't know what I, like, didn't know how I could do it. And like, I think just mentally for me, yeah, like I just wanted to be able to prove myself. So I was going out in my heat just being like, I'm going to prove myself that I'm not just this, this girl here that I'm like, that I can win. And like, I just ended up like, I think mentally just, just like scrambling myself and just caring way too much about what others thought about you know about the expectations about proving myself because of yeah getting out of that pigeonhole I guess but um yeah it was just the way that surfing was for those sort of like five five to ten yeah sort of five five years I would say solid five years it was like that and I mean it's amazing like women's surfing is in such an incredible place today like I look at all the young girls that were my age back then like and so it's 10 years later and they would never ever have to do like these sort of like sexy shoots or like they can just yeah. be like marketed and known and seen as like a, mm-hmm. like total athletes and and surfers and and lifestyle surfers still having fun and stuff but just not having to do you know like what I what I sort of ended up getting pushed into and yeah I'm not gonna lie at the time I thought it was an, it was an amazing opportunity but then mm-hmm. yeah I just didn't realize how much it affected me years down the track and you know in the end I was like you know what stuff this I'm gonna go like I just ended up being like so unfulfilled with sort of you know what I'd made of myself and and how I was competing and everything and I was like I just I, I decided to like take this year where I went and surfed like these surf big waves and went on a bunch of surf trips and was like this is what I love and I've always loved big waves and like I've always sort of been known for like just going out when it's really big and just having sort of that no fear and then when I started doing that I was like yeah I'm done like this is what I want to do like I just and I was like, I'm going, I'm just going to go run with this. And it was the one thing that made me feel like alive. And I just felt felt like I could be myself and recreate myself in like the best light. And, you know, it was all for me. It wasn't for anyone else. So it was, um, yeah, making that move to big wave surfing, like was just the best thing I could have done for myself. Oh, yeah. You're a psycho though. I want to quickly, while we're speaking about the social media and the media in general, um, I want to speak about the effects on it because I think when we were growing up, we, like you said before, we didn't have it, but do you think obviously it can be so consuming and it can be detrimental to people. Do you think that for a young person in particular, that social media and media in general is having an effect on these young women and men? Yeah, no, I think, I think it does. Like I think there's so many um, positives that come with social media, but then so many negatives. And I think it's literally about everyone you know, learning how to use social media is an amazing, like, like Elle has, has used social media as a, as a tool to communicate with people around the world and meet people. And, and I think that's what's so beautiful about it. But yeah, what comes along with like portraying your image and, you know, coming across authentically, or, you know, just trying to like work out your presence there is it can be so confusing. And, mm-hmm. and I saw it firsthand with like, I remember, you know, this is like, back when Instagram just started, I, I went and surfed with all these young like 12 year old girls on the Gold Coast and and then like I just watched I, I followed them all on Instagram and I just watched like year by year like their their Instagram shots just going from like surfer yeah. girl surfer girl then just like bikini sexy like and like gnarly like just and I just yeah. realized then how much that pressure to like have this image just went 
just went nuts on Instagram and it was just, it became unhealthy, I think. And I think the best thing Instagram did was take away the likes, take like, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just removing that, that, you know, thing that you want to, yeah, like have that, I guess, I don't know, reward at the end of a photo, which is just outrageous. Yeah. Cause you know, at the end of the day, we're all here for, you know, human connection so and silly. yeah, it's hard. Like, we still talk about it today. It's hard to do Instagram. Sometimes I completely just switch off and go like two weeks. I'm like, just don't want to buy of it or just. I mean, I, I've been off for the last month nearly and I'm like, I, I've enjoyed every second. Like I, I, yeah. I don't. And then it's scary I, to go back, isn't it? To be fair, I don't really want to borrow of it. Like I'm so <laughs> enjoying like not being involved, like yeah. involved in it at all. And like I. Yeah, when you jump off Instagram, you realise how much time you actually have Mm -hmm. and, like, how you can be in the present moment and, like, how much more beautiful, like, your connections with people are. And, I mean, I think, as as, like, surfing was the best thing, like, I guess when you did have Instagram because you'd always go surfing and you go for a day out in the water and not have your phone on you and you come back and you're like, oh, I don't even want to go on it anymore. Like, but, um, you know, like, so surfing's an amazing way to, like, get away from your fucking phone. (laughs) But, yeah, um, yeah, and... And just adventures, like you just want to go. We don't, we shouldn't be here sitting on our phones. And I think that's what what would have been really hard during COVID. Like during lockdown, everyone would have just become so like addicted to their phones. And like I, I can say that like you know I was spending more time that I eventually put that like time limit on my phone and it like pops up. Yeah. And it's like fifteen minutes. That's it. And I'm like, yep, put it away, <laughs> and just put some music on and just move your body. Yeah. Totally. I you would probably have had this heaps like when you go out away on a boat or something and you don't have reception I, like because I definitely know that one of the happiest times in my life I think was when I went away with Chump's parents on their yacht in the middle of fucking nowhere for four yes. weeks we didn't even see our phones they because they we couldn't even turn them on there was not even satellite no reception no internet no nothing they literally stayed in our suitcase and we were just eating swimming diving doing like just literally so weird not seeing oh, any technology for a month Oh like my gosh, that had- technology yeah. detox is the best. Everyone should do it. Um, yeah, put a time limit on your Instagram and, and just go on either at night or like in the morning, just be like, cool, done for the day. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like there's so much beauty out there and like so much we could be, yeah, so much we can do and yeah. You, you can't totally. blame, I think, all the younger girls, especially in an industry like yours or just in any industry growing up, having a bit of a platform and trying to build that going through totally. that like identity crisis where you don't really know what you're meant to be and what's on brand because you get pushed into these things. But it's I think a lot of it is changing now. But just like yeah. throughout it all, who could you say has had your back from day dot throughout like the roller coaster of all that and, and now kind of since you started? Yeah, well, I think, you know, obviously you girls, like all my friends at home, I, I love nothing more than coming home and just like having, you know, even though being like a athlete, just literally switching off and like just living like that really normal, beautiful life with you girls back at home and, and always being able to like call on, call on you guys and just like my group of friends was just, I like, I just... I feel so lucky to have such an incredible group of friends. Um, you know, all my surf girlfriends and all of like our group of friends is just so incredible. And and obviously my brother, he was always an amazing support. Yeah. My mum and dad, um, and yeah, my brother's now wife. Like, there's just been so many amazing people that I just have in like my small little little like our little family community that um have just always yeah had my back, pushed me through. Um, and then yeah, like just just pushed me to go on and, and chase what I was doing. Definitely when I did start surfing big waves, everyone was like, uh, can you not? Like, that's fucking yeah. crazy. Uh, we don't want to. <laughs> like, everyone's just like, look, how, look at your legs. They're going to snap in half. And I'm like, no, they won't. They're fine. They're stronger like, than you. Like, oh. you really feel the need to do this. And she's like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, all right. And she'd come. Right. I, actually, Laura, Laura's just, like, honestly, wow. I've, I've been friends with Laura. I think Laura's been my longest friend since since what we were like four or five since primary school like Laura was a maid of honor at my wedding like we don't very see each other very often but like whenever we're together it's just like on but I remember growing up like Laura used to be the absolute lord of our group she was always the rich one like like (laughs) remember when we were growing up like we'd we'd go out for dinner and Laura would buy us all cocktails or like she'd like she'd like support us as a family as as friends like we're like fuck yeah this friend she's just like rich 
<laughs> oh god, I was definitely not rich, but I was like 15 and I'd yeah. made like like won the pro juniors years and won like a thousand bucks prize money and was like, Yeah, girls, we're going out when I get home. I'm like, I've got three days home and they all the girls are like, um, well, I I can't I'm not getting paid till the end of the week for my job and I was like, Don't even worry, I'll like you. So I was like, I'm not gonna see yeah. you guys so we're all going out, like it's my show. Oh. Yeah. Laura literally supported us, eh? <laughs> That's so um, fucking funny. But legend. like, where is your crazy little head at? Like your your little toothpick legs, and then your head at paddling onto waves that are literally thirty feet. They're like th- the size of a three story building. Is that right, Lorbs? Like, yeah. Is it a yeah. drug? Is it like an adrenaline thing that you're addicted to? Like, can you just talk us through those Freak. moments? Yeah, it's so wild. I mean, you probably talk to um any big wave surfer. It's like. It's so bizarre because, like, even I hadn't surfed, like, big waves um, in, like, two years just because of COVID and I went to Hawaii this year and I paddled out and I had all these new beautiful boards and all my equipment. I've got this, like, j- uh, you know, this vest that I pull the cord on and, like, puffs up. I can send you a video. It's Blow hilarious. Video. I had my helmet on and, like, I'm being very <laughs> safe so now because I'm just, like, I've, you know, got a puppy, got to, like, make sure I'm, like, holding my breath and coming Your back mama. up. Yeah. Yeah, got it done. But, um, yeah, like, I think... When I was over there again, I was just like paddled out and almost got this like wave the size of, yeah, like a three-story building on my head as soon as I got out there. And I was like, oh, my God, like this is crazy. Like I don't know if I want to do this anymore. <laughs> and I was out there and I was like, mm, I don't think this is this is crazy. Like, And I was like, I'm just going like, to go paddle in. Like I think this is like like I don't feel the same <laughs> way that I did. And then um, I was like, let's just catch one little wave. And I was like, caught one little, little wave. And I was like, oh, love, that was pretty fun. And I was like, let's try to catch a big one. And then I went How back big out. was like, that oh. little one doll? Sorry. <laughs> oh, it was probably like 12, 12 to 15 foot or something. But then I paddled, <laughs> paddled back out again and then I just like ended up going this like big, big set and I was like, yeah, I love this. <laughs> and it was just like this wild bit of like emotion. Like I, I feel like my brain is like pretty crazy. Like I've always had that sort of like, you know, all over the place, like bit ditzy, like ADD, like, Dead can't devil. really, you know, yeah, daredevil. <laughs> can't really like get very distracted very easy. But um, when I'm out there in like the big waves, like I've never been like more focused and in the moment and like, you know, calm and present and just like Whoa. on. And like it's like this switch goes off in me and I'm just like so on. And are you thinking about anything? I mean, no, you're thinking about the wave because the wave is like the most dangerous oh. thing in the world coming towards you. You're thinking about when you need to paddle, your timing, oh, like trying to take off and make a wave. Like there's like when you're out in the lineup of, and the waves are that big, you, you're just not thinking about anything else in the world. Like you just in that moment, I think for me that's when I found like so much like I just I was like this is the coolest best thing ever like when I used to surf heats like I'd just be like thinking the whole time like like my mind wouldn't stop and I'd try like everything to stop it and like and then when I'm in big waves I'm like so so on like I can't even explain it and um it just makes me feel like the most me ever and when like even though it's really scary when and your heart sort of sinks when you see these the wave for the first time and then you like decide to go and you have to commit and then um, you take off and you go down. It's like bumpy and and um, yeah. If you make the wave, it's the best feeling in the world. And if you don't, you just like oh dear, like hold your breath, go into your training, stay calm. Like it just feels like a bus has hit you. But like yeah, it's just like you feel like you might die. Yeah. Well, you feel like you feel just like you're getting literally like you you're a tiny little ant that's been pushed into like the washing machine. It's just like you like feel like you're ping ponging around under the water. But, um, Far yeah, out. then sometimes then you pop up all of a sudden and you're like, holy crap, that was like, I'm alive. I'm, that was fun. Like, I'm going to do I it again. I love that. That's like the nichest yeah. happy place I've ever heard of in my life. It's a pretty whack happy place for sure. It's the niche. You just explaining yeah. that just made me like all like emotional yeah. and I got goosebumps and shit. <laughs> yeah, like. it's definitely, it's definitely a niche place to be happy because I definitely I'm I paddle onto like a one foot wave I'm like I can't do it what if, what if I'm nose dive I am like the queen of wipeouts I have like an amazing wipeout reel yeah. and everyone every time is like oh god she's gonna like we definitely like, need to get a hold of a wipeout yeah. reel to put, yeah, to put on, need that. on our Instagram 
ad break. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Nat B. No frills or trims or awkward bits here. Just the comfiest underwear you will ever wear, made ethically and sustainably. I'm loving the new Cabrini shorts and top. I have lots of sheer dresses that will work nicely underneath to cover me right up. Yes, I'm in love with the new Cabrini set too. It's inspired by their love of the open water. The Cabrini takes high-waisted to the high seas and the low V and spaghetti strap of the bralette lets you channel your inner bikini vibes on the outside while keeping the girls in safely. Don't forget you have 30% off code over at natvbasics.com. Use the code DARLINGSHINE at checkout. Back in 2016, I and it was kind of the year that I decided that I just wanted to like not be such a comp monster and like I was doing like 20 contests a year and I was like, you know, what, I'm going to go and just like in between my events like chase all these amazing swells. So I went to Fiji and it was like huge and amazing and I went to – like all these beautiful waves and then I um because of that I ended up getting invited into like the first ever women's world tour event at um a world I guess big wave event at Jaws in Hawaii and it was yes yeah, the first time that the girls had ever surfed there and yeah I was one of the 12 girls that got invited and I'd never even ridden like a huge board you're riding these 10 foot boards that are like wouldn't even fit in this room they're like huge like wow. they hardly go under your arm <laughs> and um I didn't have any of the equipment so I went over to Jaws and I was like I wasn't going to do it it was around my 25th birthday and I remember like I had all these birthday plans and and then the contest gets called on and it was like going to be over my um birthday and I was like you know what like I like sat in bed and I was like watching these waves at Jaws and Jaws is like one of the biggest gnarly scariest like ugly paddle waves like in the world and um the Fuck contest that. director I was talking to I was like so how big is it going to be and he was like you know we're going to run the girls when it's like like really beautiful conditions like 15 foot um maybe like some 20 foot sets I love like how you keep on describing these waves as beautiful yeah, yeah, like, yeah beautiful. we're going to like beautiful about these waves yeah we'll, or mindful. Like, we'll make, <laughs> yeah we'll make sure the girls are like just out in like really nice conditions and like um yeah like he, he was like gave me all this confidence and I was like yeah like that sounds like mental so I was like watching all these videos on YouTube of Jaws and I was like writing in small day at Jaws and like and I was like yeah I could do that I could do that and then I remember like the contest got called on and it was like you have basically they have like the orange um signal where they like they're like the contest might be on and then it goes to green and you have to like pack up all your shit and like get to the contest in like 24 hours and it's going to start like the day later so they called it green and I was like I'm going and then I was like I'm not going and I was like literally walking around my house and I was like every 10 minutes I was like I'm gonna go and then I was like nah that is it's just nuts like I've never surfed these boards like I can't do that then I was like all of a sudden I was like you know what I'm gonna regret it if I don't go like even if I like go and just sit there and don't even catch a wave like it'll be an amazing experience like I might just be able to like get a small one like I'll be out at Jaws, there'll be no one out there, there'll be amazing water safety and I was like, cool, I'm going to go. And I get there and I like, I'm scrambling to like borrow all this gear and I like borrowed this big board from one of the big wave surfers and like a, a vest and like all this all this shit, they were just like putting it on me and like, they're like, cool, there you go, you're all set. And um, anyway, we get there and they're like, so like the swell forecast is like doubled in size and it's going to be like 20 to 30 foot tomorrow and I was like, holy shit like that's gnarly <laughs> and they're like and it's going to be really windy and I was like right right um okay so then oh we get gosh. out in the boat in the morning and yeah like this boat takes us out to Jaws and I'd never even I can seen just it. imagine you being like beautiful calm waves stunning <laughs> like, I was well, like, most of these girls that are doing this have like not that you don't have experience but like no, they, no well, they were born big wave surfers like they've done this for years and years and years they've chased waves around the world they've done all this and there's this like Laura who like to put it into perspective is like my size like tiny and then this she's like going out there on these waves that are like a hundred times her size like I want to compare just... your little body to the size of the wave it's like you're she's yeah probably I remember going, when should I do it Chloe and I'm probably going no not Fuck at all no. like no faith in you at all <laughs> I know I remember like calling my mum and dad and I was like guys so I'm, I've decided I'm gonna go just because like the worst thing that can happen is like I sit out there and I just like don't end up going a wave and like that's fine like it's still a good experience to like just see it and I like the, my big thing when I go to surf a big wave is like I always just tell myself I'm not gonna catch a wave I'm like I'm only gonna go to watch 
strategy. and like I end up just doing something absolutely insanely crazy and like get like a crazy wipeout or like get an amazing wave but I always oh like God. take off all the expectation and like convince myself that I'm just going to watch so like on the way over there I was like I'm just going to watch the contest and I'm like in the spectator contest. and um yeah, yeah I'm like just gonna be spectating and I was with my brother and like we both get over there and when we get out into the lineup at Jaws my heat is in like 35 minutes and like we just arrived out there the boat was a bit late and I see the wave for the first time and I'm just like oh my god it was just like wild and then the two girls in the heat before me one of them got their her knee like exploded and they both like had to go to hospital and I was like because it was huge and and windy and I was like this is a bit and like the girls that had surfed there like a lot were like this is really dangerous out here like this is just like this is like Please this is like the devil. conversation that you had with your brother at that point yeah like me and Chris were just talking and he was like Loz like it's all good like you're like a really good paddler like because I did nippers like I used to be like really good he's like you can all you gotta do is just paddle 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 and like and then um a couple of the other guys I was with like I put on my jersey and like I'd I had this wave that I surfed like another wave at this board that I tried the day before but it was at a completely different wave and then the guy that lent it to me goes, you can't ride that board. It's way too small. And he just like chucked me this like huge boat, boat board. It was like a 10 foot foot four ball. It was like the biggest board I'd ever seen or like been on. And I was like, radio, here we go. And I paddled out into the lineup and um, yeah, like another big wave surfer. When I was paddling, I paddled past him and he goes, Laura, if you see a wave, just put your head down and like paddle your hardest and go. He's like, if you see any wave, just go. And like, because I hadn't been out in waves like that size, like it's it was like twenty to twenty five, like maybe thirty feet waves. I um I didn't really know what a big wave what looked like when it was actually coming towards Whoa. me. So like they all look like huge freaking like pine trees or like power poles coming towards you. And oh you and I was God. like this yeah. first wave, like I'll I'll send you guys the video. Um, yeah, and you guys can put it up or something if you want. But it's just absolutely like insane. I think everyone thought I I died. My like, apparently my mum cried and was like, oh my god, like we all just lost you. You all of a sudden lost your head in this this. We we're all like watching and we're going, oh my god, she's gone. Like there's no law. There's nothing to be seen. So scary. So because I hadn't really like didn't really have a gauge of like how big the waves were. I see this first wave come through and I was like, I'm pretty sure this is a medium sized wave. <laughs> or maybe like a small to medium one. So I swing and I just like paddle my hardest and I'm paddling, it's paddling, paddling. One. And I stand up and I'm like, I've got this. And then like the wind just like blows me off the back of the wave. And like I just like get blown off. And I was like, so I was on it for a second and then like it blew me off. And then I was like, oh, you like nice. like, I think I might I think it might have just blown me like further out. But like what happens when you get like blown off the wave? The wave sucks over and then you get sucked over with it. So, like, oh. for a second I thought that I was, like, in the clear and then all of a sudden I feel myself getting sucked back and I was like, oh, no, oh, no, I'm going over oh the falls. It's still going over the falls. And while oh I was going God. over the falls, I, like, pulled my, like, vest and it, like, puffs up. Um, it's got the canis- the CO2 canisters in it. And so you turn into this, like, puffer fish and, like, I just went over, got exploded and, like, kind of got tumbled and then just oh. shot, like, straight back up. And, um Everyone thought I should have been like severely injured, but I um I somehow like escaped it. I just got like kind of shot. I don't know like how this happened, but I got shot basically up like exactly where I took oh off, and like God. all the jet skis were like <laughs> looking for me in the whitewash, and I was like, "Come out here!" And they picked me up, and they're like, "You just like got away with how murder." Did I feel then, your little white head. <laughs> wow. And then um and then the next wave I got, I like surfed it and made it. And then um I got a set on the head, and I end up. The, the wave's power actually ended up tearing my MCL. And because I had so much adrenaline, I didn't really realise and I, I got, like, one of the like longest hold downs that I'd had. Um, like How, how long? I, I mean, I thought I, I thought, thought I counted to 30 seconds and that was, like, I was doing, like, really intense breath training before I went there. So I got my breath hold up to three and a half minutes and was doing all this pool breath work and basically what we would do is, like, we'd, um you know, you kind of switch off and just hold your breath underwater and, and you just can't fight those waves. And so, I mean, I thought it was pretty long. Like my brother was like, he was like getting a bit worried. But um, I kind of just got dragged under the water for a while. But then I popped up and I was fine. Like I had all the adrenaline buzzing and I was like, went to go paddle back out again. And I was like, I want to get, get another wave. And um, no. I ended up making the final and made it through the heat. It's like that blue crush thing. Like she gets one fall and then like gets another explosion, but she makes the heat. <laughs> but um yeah, but then I ended up 
coming back to the boat and I was like, oh, my knee's a bit sore. And then I was like, oh, it's getting sore by the minute the more I was sitting on the boat and I'd, I'd ended up tearing my MCL. Um, and so I couldn't do the final. Um, but, like, I think that moment kind of just was like one of those moments where I was like I went home, um, had to, like, be out of the water for, like, four months, missed the start of the tour the next year and I just never really, like, got back into it. I was like I'm. everyone was like, okay, she's been scared, she's been injured, she's not going to, like, do that again. And I was like... I can't wait to go back <laughs> and everyone was like you're crazy they're like surely that would have just like you know made her not want to do it anymore but um yeah like it, it just it's just the wildest experience being out there in those waves you're an inspiration man then I ended up leaving the tour the next year and well I, I fell off the tour because I was injured half the year and then I did a few comps at the end of the year and I was just like I couldn't get back into it and then um the next year um, I decided that I was just going to go surf big waves around Australia and and then ended up making this this documentary called Undone and kind of like after having that huge wipeout, I realised that I needed to like go back to the start and like totally like just do everything the right way, do all my training and like because Jaws is like the Mercedes of waves, I guess. <laughs> like no I, mucking around. I, should have, I should have been in like my Suzuki Swift like going like <laughs> <laughs> like I shouldn't have just jumped straight into Jaws. Like I'm looking back, I mean, it was an amazing experience, but like probably shouldn't go to Jaws without having other big wave experience. And I, I knew that after I was like, okay, like wow. none of no more of this reckless stuff. Like time to just like just go back to the beginning. And um, that's what the that's what Undone is about. Like me, sort of, you see that wipeout at the start, and then I go back and relearn and and go through the motions, and then um, work my way back up to Jaws like three years later and, and make a wave and. Yeah, so it was a pretty cool journey. Far out. You're, you're nuts. Like, you're a nutter. <laughs> like a nut. but, oh, and also we haven't actually really touched on the movie you made. I, we're going to have to put the link in the show notes and everything because people, everyone needs to watch um, Undone. Movie. It's off the fucking chain. All of you girls came to my Undone premiere that I had um, at like a theatre here in Sydney and – I think like half the girls were like, I am so sorry. I had no idea that you were even doing any yeah. of that the last two years. And I was Literally. like, no, like, seriously. I guess I, I guess I don't really talk about it. Like they're like, we knew, we, we know that you just like you go don't. and like go off for like a week and, and surf and stuff. And they're like, I had no idea that that's what you're freaking doing. And I was like, it's fine. I mean, we're all like living Thank our you. lives, doing our thing. But, we're um, shit friends. Yeah. We were holding on to our seats. It was the scariest movie I've ever watched. It was like a horror film. Everyone needs to watch Undone. It's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it's like properly R-rated though. Like, <laughs> One of the things that I absolutely love about Laura and, I mean, I take my hat off to you because you, you inspire me in this way because I, you always have time for the young girls and like the young um, up and coming girls. You're always trying to like host events. You you have the time for everyone. Like you, if anyone stops you in the street, you'll always speak to every mm. single one of them. And little girls just seriously look up to you. I know that what a few. I mean, you're always trying to give give them your surfboards if you can. Like you'll take your clothes off your off your own back to give them if if they needed that. But what advice do you have for young girls that are up and coming, not just up and coming surfers, but just young girls in general that want to chase their dreams? I think that's really nice, Chloe, thanks. I mean, um, <laughs> I think I've seen like for, yeah, I, I gave this little girl a surfboard um, like years ago and at, she ended up like surfing, falling in love with it and ended up getting sponsored and travelling the world. And it was just like one of those moments that I realised like how much like doing like just a little bit to someone can like totally change their lives and so I think that's like a good thing for all of us to know like you don't actually know how much you you can like impact someone or someone else's life and I think you know I guess if I could give any advice it is just like that like I'm saying that like be kind to others don't ever be afraid to just like help others like Elodie I look up to you so much um even in like your darkest times you're always just wanting to help others and um and just like it's because you I inspire guess, me, sis. I think of you in the big waves, and I'm like, she can do that. No. <laughs> but I think what I always, um, I always love that saying, like, be the person that you wanted in your like life growing up, or like try to like, I don't know, like just, just yeah, being kind to everyone and um, yeah, giving everyone that time. But I think for all girls for chasing their dreams, it's just like 
don't ever think that you're not good enough. Um, I mean, there were so many times like, you know, when it came to big wave surfing where I was like, I don't have the body type, I don't have the power. Like there were so many things that like were going against me, but I was like, but I believe that I can do it and I'm not going to let anyone tell me that I'm not going to do it. Like everyone would be like, you are so small, you need to get stronger. And I'm like, no, I'm doing it just the way I am. And, you know, we can just go out there and surprise ourselves. And I think, you know, to me, like living truthfully and honestly and and just constantly recreating yourself is so special and important and, and it's just the way to live like a really like authentic life and um I think yeah like that recreation like I look back on all of my phases through my life and all of the things I've chatted about in this podcast with you girls and I think one of the biggest things for me is like just never regretting any of it like even though I say you know these these moments in my life were were hard or tough but like I mean, we can always recreate, we can always grow and and all those moments throughout our life bring us to like where we are now, which is, you know, just trying to be our be- the, the best self we can be. So I think just to anyone out there listening, just, you know, it's never too late to recreate, um, do something that you love, go down a track that you've never, like you've always wanted to or like but just haven't believed you've been able to. And so, yeah, don't, don't be afraid of um, failure. Go for yeah. it. God, aren't well, we so you're gonna make to me all emotional. I know. Again. I'm like gonna cry. We're, I'm, we are not like we always look at me. I'm about to cry. I'm. <laughs> this podcast is where it's. I'm. I'm very emotional. I mean, going wow. back to like us though, like the last few years, I think for you know for all of us has been like so life changing and life altering. And I think um, you know it's made us realize what's important in life, and it is friends, family, living, and living like a really you know, mm. like in, in, like powerful, like impactful life and, and just, yeah, spreading that mm. with kindness and love, I think, and, um, yeah, trying to inspire everyone else to live like that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking wow. earth, everyone, too short not everyone to. Everyone needs a everyone needs a friend like Laura. Honestly, mm. she's the one, like, you can't can't fault you. You actually just an all round mm. legend. You're just the nicest. Like even she can always make a situation. She can always find the silver lining in every mm. situation. Even if I come to her in like despair, they'll always be like, no, but like you know, this is you know this is mm. the, the, the silver lining. You know, this is like honestly, I I couldn't ask for a better friend. We're so lucky to have you in our in our court. Mm. Like, seriously, I love doing life with you. You do that, yeah. but not in like a toxic positivity way. You literally like are always with us when we're having a fucking mm. absolute shocker. But in the same token, you'll somehow just randomly make us laugh. Like you'll be crying <laughs> your head off too, but you'll just somehow I like know. I don't know, and not in like a like in like a perfect way. You, yeah, you're literally, you're so fucking unique. Gosh. Another funny thing that I wanted to talk about is your diet because, like, I'm not going to rinse you, but I, like, I want to talk to our listeners about this. So, so Laura is, like, one day she's vegan, but then the next day she's, like, lactose intolerant, gluten-free. Like, she's all of the above, but she's, like, not a real one. So, like, we'll go to a <laughs> restaurant afraid. and she'll, like, order all oh, the healthy all the healthy yeah. stuff on the menu, everything green on the menu she'll order, and then I'll get, like, steak and chips. And she'll be like, can I just have, like, a little bit of that? And then all of a sudden eats my whole meal. I'm like, just order the steak. It's all good. Or we go to a coffee shop and she it. orders, like, what did you order at the coffee shop this morning? Have you gone yet? Yeah, well, yeah no, I ordered a juice, a smoothie, and yep. two different coffees. There you go. My my perfect example. She orders four or five drinks at the coffee shop in the morning and comes home and then, like, do you actually Still just drink them? Me. Yeah, half the time she <laughs> won't drink them. No, they, they seem to last me most of the morning and then, um, yeah, like I just, like, yeah, like you said, I think you guys have always given me crap about the things I eat. I try to be really, really healthy. Then at the end of the day I'm just like, ugh. Like Margarita. I just, everything's balanced, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, margarita time like I feel like my life has been such a like it's just such a balance and I've like tried to like I love to have fun like obviously like we have a lot of fun together and we're like probably the most normal end of like the spectrum when it comes to like athletes I'm like people like I I went to this I went to this like gnarly wave in WA and I, I asked this guy to come and like mentor me and help me and basically like tie me into some waves and he was like I went on your Instagram and I was like who's this margarita drinking, like, fun, fashionista, big wave surf girl? I was like, 
interesting. I was like, that's me. <laughs> like, Boy. <laughs> you like the first photo you had was like you were like all dressed up with a cocktail. I was like, who is this person? I'm like, no boxes, we can be at all. You've got so many things to add to the resume. Like you just have, you just do everything. You're fucking amazing. It blows my mind. I literally could have cried before when you were talking about mindfulness and meditation when you're about to die in the surf. Like who does that? I mean, I think like for me it was like I think like just we live such a like, you know, even though I was, yeah, going away and surfing, like I honestly thinking having you girls as my friends growing up was just like you guys got me into fashion. You guys got me into like all this like other stuff outside of the surfing world. And it just like ended up carrying through. And I like always loved that I like didn't just love surfing. Like there was so many other things that I loved and it's like just mm. followed through and like given me like so many opportunities outside of, mm. um, yeah, just being in the water. I'm pretty sure I tried to be Laura's manager for like six years. <laughs> you, she would have been the best manager ever. Yeah, never, yeah, never, yeah. never, never, never followed through with it. I'm glad that we didn't, though. But for you, what's next in your career? Like, where you know you you're not actually onto a surfing anymore, but we know you're doing the commentating. Can you talk about that alongside the big wave like stuff? What's going on? Yeah, well, basically, I kind of just made the decision. The, the decision, <laughs> tongue tied. Such a good commentator. I always get tongue tied. I'm like, sorry, guys. <laughs> I made the decision last year during COVID um, that I was just going to like, you know, not go back to competing. It was kind of, I was kind of on the fence for a while and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go for free surfing and big wave. Like it's just, it's really what makes me like feel most alive and like I, I'm just going to try to do that as, as long as possible and, and then until maybe one day I, I really have the urge to go back to competing. So I'm focusing on that and then, yeah, I've got this new job commentating um, with the WSL. So um I'm usually better at commentating like after 10 a.m. This is after her six coffees and three juices and two but no, uh, it's fun. So I'm I'm doing the whole whole year on tour, doing all the events and like just get to travel a bunch. And then yeah, we get to meet up during the year in in Europe and kind of just came to go travel and and surf and and chase waves again because. I'm sick of the cold. I just want to go be in warm places. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like traveling now with all your surf mates rather like and not surfing with them but commentating for them instead? Like is it is it different or are they just like, oh, yeah, Laura's on tour? Like what's the go? No, it's really cool. Like at the start I was like I'm going to know straight away if this job is for me or not because I'm either going to be at the contest and be like I should be in the water. And I think Pipeline was hard because, you know, I love like the big waves of consequence and they had their first ever girls world tour event at Pipeline at the start of the year and I was in the water commentating. But there's still such a difference between when you're in the heat at these big waves and um, when you're not and so much goes into it. And I think, yeah, like I'm, I love being able to travel with all the girls but then just not have that pressure to, you know, compete and just have have fun really and it's just um, and just support them and, and just see and analyse from the other side um, and, yeah, just try not to like stutter and stuff up or like to call anyone the wrong name. <laughs> Have you got any other projects apart from surfing? Because I know you're like so creative. I know you've always got your fingers in something. Laura's yeah. part owner in tears with me, so that's fun. Yeah, yeah, good toe in from Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I'm just aligning with like a bunch of brands and working on like a um, working on a few different like film like surf projects at the moment, and then hopefully make like hopefully one day you're going to make another feature film like Undone. Um, around big wave surfing so sort of just trying to like make all that happen now but just kind of like not not having too many plans little bits and pieces all over the place but um yeah just want to go travel and have it have a good time oh, I hope our paths cross heaps when you're they on will. tour I've already like mapped out all the um because I've got your schedule now that Elodie sent through so I've mapped out all of uh, the events and like when I'm going to be staying with you <laughs> I'm like Venice house <laughs> and eat the house Portugal house <laughs> yes yes we're on we're on I know that um, yeah. it's gonna be we're so all going fun. on tour Count, countdown is on only like two or three months and then we're all going to be there we're going to be living our best Euro life we record oh, it we'll good. have to do another podcast on tour that'll be fun yes oh, oh my gosh um, um so fun travel stories like we've we've been away heaps together us three and you guys have like we've got so many funny stories with Laura she's hilarious I want to firstly talk about I wasn't there but how did Chanel 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 
get you wearing <laughs> wearing wet you both actually wearing wetsuits and walking through the streets of Paris with a oh, Chanel God. surfboard like can you just talk about the branding and how the fuck that happened oh, and God. that was actually, like 10 years ago uh, yeah me and Chloe did that shoot together um I was at a surf comp in um yeah it was such a best brand ever are you kidding yeah we were um at a surf comp in in France and I think I'd lost and we were just like let's go to Paris and my my publicist at the time was like I've got an apartment there and we're like this is sick we're like let's just make sure we don't get like abducted we were like just scared because we watched that movie Taken and we're like we can't get abducted like anything (laughs) but um we were in Paris just like riding around having like the best time and then I ended up doing this shoot where we did it together and I had this like mental Chanel surfboard and was like walking under the Eiffel Tower and it's like still one of my favorite shots today and it was um, so so funny the gypsy kid um yeah that's going on the gram amazing vlog so yeah it was it was really cool and nothing like a a Chanel surfboard in the Paris canals yeah (laughs) in a wetsuit (laughs) yeah they were like do you want to go paddle in the, in there I was like no oh <laughs> it's really. all murky what what's in there there's obviously not shark is there sharks in there what's no in there? no, no I didn't think so. what's in the canals but, eels and stuff yeah probably there's definitely not well, sharks in the Paris there, canals. Not, not for swimming know. people swim in the yeah. fountains over there not the canals <laughs> yeah yeah those but, things are crook one last question sorry <laughs> who inspires you who do you look up to or as a young girl, who did you look up to? I mean, this question's always been so hard for me, but I think, like, I'm, like, so inspired by so many people and just, like, so many people doing different things. Like, I'm inspired by my friends that are that have had kids and that are being, like, working mums and then my friends that are, like, just, like, living their dreams and doing their own things. Like, I think I'm just, like, inspired by so many different people for the different approaches and ways that they tackle things in life like I think Mm. like I've never just been someone that's inspired by like a celebrity or someone like I'm more Mm. inspired by like the people around me in everyday life like people as well that are like not afraid to like tackle like these worldly problems as well and that's what I think you know even though we have talked about Instagram a lot um today it's like I feel like Elodie you said it's changing like there's so many people that are on there like pushing like climate change looking after our planet um doing all these things Mm. to just like you know to help the next generation um like so i think there's so many amazing people that you can follow and find on instagram and be inspired by that are like really taking like these you know big leaps to push out like really valuable information and um yeah try it try and make the Fully. world a better place really fucking all about that right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's people like you doll Oh, fuck, you speak so much sense. It's amazing. Yeah, I you're love amazing, it. Laura. Right. Sometimes um, I feel like it's absolute gibberish. We can't just all be out here acting like a bunch of monkeys. Some people need to be doing doing the hard yards to inspire others. Yeah. Um, Lorbs, enjoy the next 26 drinks that you're going to consume today. We love you so much. And I just loved that episode. Yeah, You're love you, Laura. Thank you. Can't wait to give you a cuddle next you. week. I know. I cannot wait to cuddle you, girls. My favorite eggs. Proud yeah. of you. Love you. Favorite little tiny egg on the biggest waves in the world. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> and watch Undone Film and follow Laura on Instagram. Um, you probably already are, but yes. So, love, love everybody. You. Bye. Love you guys. Bye.